share, copy link. Are we still off? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let me, um, All right, I'm here. Uh, sorry, I'm sharing the link everywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. What's up, everybody? <laughs> so, my town, uh, my town is Irwin, Tennessee, was devastated by a flood. Like, the biggest flood that I've ever heard anybody talk about was in 1977 or 78, and uh, they're estimating like 20 more feet of water than happened in 78. There was apparently a flood in like 1918, that was pretty severe, but no one has pictures of that one. So I, I don't know. I don't know anybody was alive and around then. Um, we had rainfall already, so the it's on the Nolichucky River. There's this there's this misconception that the Nolichucky River has a dam on it and the dam broke. That's just not true. Two dams broke or whatever. The Nolichucky River flows from a river called the North Tow River in North Carolina. And the North Tow River had a dam built on it back in like 1918, 1915-something. But that dam's been decommissioned and taken out since the early 2000s. Somewhere around there. So there was no dam. There was no dam break. Um, downstream from us, in a town called Greenville, Tennessee, there is a dam, but that dam stood. It didn't break. Um, so the Greenville Dam didn't break, but that's way downstream from us. Um, it had, I think they said they had eight feet over their highest ever recorded high water mark at the dam. And they opened all the floodgates, let the water flow, but it stood. Uh, they were expecting it to break for a long time. Um, and all the reports were out about it, but it didn't break. Multiple bridges where I live, if you've seen my videos, multiple bridges collapsed, including one that's part of I-26. I-26 completely shut down. Um, there's an area up the interstate. If you're like leaving my town and going to Asheville, that's, you can't access the interstate is closed. You can't access the old road. Like the two lane road is closed and people are trapped up there. They are bringing those people down by police escort out of there. But once you come out, you can't go back just cause it's so dangerous, but they don't want people trapped there. There's been some looting going on. So now there's a curfew from 8 PM to 7 AM in some more rural areas. Um, we have an industrial park right beside the river that has uh, a place called Blue Links. Uh, they make pop. We have a plastic place, AB Plastics. It's just a bunch of uh, the place where I used to work when we built those sheds you have in your barn. That's all down there. Almost all of that was destroyed. Uh, and several people ended up getting trapped on a 
top of flatbed tractor and trailer. And then that flatbed tractor and trailer overturned. I think it was 12 people. And they recovered six of them. Three of them are missing. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, three women are missing. One man. Um, part of that. I'm at my sister's house right now if you want to know. So basically, we knew some water was coming. But we never thought it would like set records. No one would say anything like that. So the reason I'm still filthy <laughs> is I'm the maintenance guy at the campground. And so we started preparing. We moved everything from the... We moved everything we could from the... The river's edge, picnic tables and stuff. We don't have any like camper spots right on the river. We have tent spots because it's grassy and it's a beach. So we moved picnic tables and and fire pits and stuff that we didn't want to lose from the river and moved it out of the way. And that's a that's about as far as we thought it would get. The water just kept rising and kept rising and kept rising. Not because it rained at my house. We only got like three inches of rain total over the past five days. Instead, it's because it rained over in North Carolina where the headwaters of the river is, and that all came downhill. Um, so, yeah, that, that happened. Uh, we spent most of the day moving stuff, moving stuff, moving stuff just back from the water, back from the water, back from the water, and then it became clear that we were going to lose some buildings. Um, the first building we lost was a boathouse, which is closest to the river, obviously, and it stores like everybody's kayaks and boats and stuff because a lot of people that live there use the river pretty regularly. So it stores kayaks and, and boats and, and all the stuff, the, the beach mats, like the mats we get out and put in the water that you can jump off of or whatever. It came down the river. It was doing every bit of 20 miles an hour and hit a tree and split it in half. So that's like when we knew it was going to get bad. Um we loaded up everything we could as far as like fire pits, picnic tables and stuff in the back of a truck, took them to the high ground. Um, I didn't get to take care of much of my personal belongings because I'm the maintenance guy. At the, I was trying to save the campground stuff and I was still a ways from the water. So then it infiltrated. It kept, kept rising, kept rising, kept rising. It spilled over into a pond that we have there. Um, there's still 33 people missing. I don't know if there's any confirmed casualties. There's 33 people still missing. In my tiny town of like 14,000 people, there's still 33 people missing. And that's just in this town. But I uh, started taking buildings. Um, some of the buildings were being taken down. Uh, it kept rising. It spilled over into our pond. It crossed our driveway. And that's, that's when we know like, hey, this is, this is basically historic. We've never seen it this high. So the garage went underwater. But the garage has been underwater before. Um, and a cabin that's called the hostel that we keep really close uh, had, had like a... It didn't go under a river water, but what happens is there's a creek that only flows and it rains. So the creek flew over the banks and into the hostel cabin. And it was probably like th three, four inches of water. We knew that was maybe going to happen. Um, after that... It just kept rising. We never thought it would go that far. It, it, it ended up coming up into the office, ended up surrounding the whole lower part of the campground. Luckily, we only had long-term tenants there. That's like me and other people that stay there year-round. And we're all the way in the back, furthest away from the river. So some people were spreading a bunch of stupid shit like, the dam broke, we got to get out of here, blah, blah, blah. But once you're in that deep, the exit's covered. The road, you can't get out uh, via vehicle. So the only way out is to, the Appalachian Trail comes right through there and crosses a bridge right there. So the Appalachian Trail comes down out of the woods, comes out at like the front of our road, like the road you take to the campground, crosses a bridge and then goes back up into the woods um, because there's no other way to cross the river there. It's the only bridge. So the only way out there is the Appalachian Trail. I've got two young kids, a dog and a cat and a wife, and the Appalachian Trail is pretty rough. Um... So, by the time it got close enough to my house, or my camper, by the time it got like 10 foot away from the camper, um, that's when I started. I went inside. It wasn't rising like, it's not like a flash flood. I don't want you to think like there was just a wall of water and we never expected it. We were watching it rise. It was probably rising like a few feet linearly, like across the ground, every hour. So... I kept trying to keep everybody calm. No dams broke. You know, it's not going to come a wall of water down. That's not that's not what we're expecting. It's going to slowly rise, and we can watch it. And there was high ground there. It's not like we didn't have a place to go. You could always go to higher ground. When it got about 10 foot away from our camper, um, I brought Mariah out. She didn't 
I wanted her to see it because I knew it would click in her head then. Because at first she's like, ah, it's fine, whatever. And she came outside and like instantly started crying. She's like, oh my God, it's so bad. So I sent her in to pack the kids' bags, whatever they needed for a few days. And I went and got everything out of the closets. Uh, my son has a PS5 and a computer. I got all the electronics I could find. Um, laptop. Um, I put all that in the car. All, all the firearms that I own, all in the car. And just handfuls and handfuls and handfuls of clothes, like out of the out of the closets and full drawers full of stuff everything that i thought i could save and i packed my wife's car full because again we can't drive out the car's gonna have to stay there i packed it as full as i could in the trunk everything we could um no sense in food we hadn't had power all day so the power is out so mariah and the boys were just hanging out in the camper trying to kill time so no food or nothing that just wasn't worth it um so I took all of our belongings, put them in Mariah's car, and drove it to the highest part of the property and parked it. I loaded everything I could in my car, drove it to the highest part of the property and dropped it. I jumped off my mom's old car that I need to sell and get rid of. I, I inherited it after she passed away, but I jumped it off and got it to a, not the highest part, but a higher part because it's, it's probably like a, it's a $2,000 car. It's not, I don't want to push somebody else out of that spot if they need it for their new vehicle. Um... By the time we got the cars loaded, the boys out, and the bags packed, our camper was already floating. Um, I had to run in. Uh, I had to run in a couple more times and get like cat food that we forgot, a dog bowl, some s simple things like that. But our camper is already like rocking back and forth and floating and like moving. So it wasn't like fully floating, like in the river, but it was enough to where when the water comes in, it would lift it and move it. And campers are really bad. I didn't know this, but apparently when they float or get fucked up or get lifted up by water, they turn over. So you could feel it like shaking real bad because the river was almost coming in like waves. So I ran in there a few more times and then I went and talked to Mariah and the boys were in a cabin up on the hill. So the owner did a really good job of opening up all the cabins that were up on the high ground and just letting people go there, right? Just in case. So I went to the boys that were in a cabin and Ollie was crying and Liam's like, I'm so stressed out. I'm just trying to hold it together for, you know, my brother. I don't want him to freak out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't want them to see them lose their home. Right. So I took the boys and we made a decision to take the dog, the boys. We had somebody watch our cat in a cabin and Mariah, me and my wife, and we hiked out on the Appalachian Trail. They were probably a hundred trees down like it was so bad uh that we were in mud up to up to ollie's waist up to my knee um and i was just carrying the dog and ollie half the time and we finally got out of there um and then my sister was able to come pick me up by the time we got out a main bridge was gone the interstate bridge was gone the industrial park was destroyed everything was gone but we got out uh, the campground's completely separated. Like, if, if you try to take the road in, it's just gone. It starts off in a national park. It's called Chestoa, C-H-E-S-T-O-A, Chestoa Park. And that is a paved road that comes into a park for day use or whatever. There's no asphalt left there. It lifted up the asphalt, dug underneath it, and left a sandy beach. Like, it was, it's insane. Um... There was, so there's, there's no, there's no asphalt there. If you go all the way down, there's a train trestle. So if you go all the way down to the train trestle and hop on, there is, uh, and at the road, the road's just gone. It washed out underneath the train trestle. That's actually the lowest part because they can't build the road up too high because the railroad bridge. Okay. So that's the lowest part and the road's just completely gone. Right. So. We tried to, we, we couldn't walk out by the road. We had to walk out on the trail. Um, we got to my sister's house, showered, got something to eat, whatever. Now, there's still people that are staying there. The reason we left is because the cabins were pretty packed. Well, I didn't want the kids to see it. They were freaking out. The cabins are pretty packed by people who don't have, like, local family. Like, they're from North Carolina, or they're from Florida, or they moved here from Philadelphia, right? And we have local family, so I figured if I could get out, that, that frees up a room or a few rooms that my family would have used for other people. Um, today, we hiked back in. Our camper, 
that we live in full time is structurally sound, but it was, it got pretty wet. So like some water got in all the electrical system where it was at was basically underwater. I don't, I can't check it because I don't have any electrical, right? I don't have, or I don't have any electric, the power's off. So I don't know if it's going to be a lot. I don't know if it's worth replacing the entire electrical system on a camper. It's kind of tweaked up a little bit because it was up against a tree for a while. Like it moved it out of its spot. So I don't know if, I don't, I don't know what that's going to be, but that's our home. That's all we have. Um, we, uh, we were trying to sell a home after we, we did a contract to purchase a home, uh, like a, uh, by owner, like financed by owner. And we got screwed out of that deal right before COVID and then housing markets went through the roof. So we bought a camper to live in and we've enjoyed it. It's a nice spot, but that's all we got. I don't have a piece of land. I don't have another house. I don't have whatever. So we're going to have to do something to make that camper work. I don't know if the campground will ever reopen. We lost, we lost the hostel cabin. We lost a two bedroom, uh, a cabin on top of the garage that they called the bunkhouse that someone lived in. We lost the garage. We lost our, um, I think it was eight. It was, let's see, uh, four, six. It was 12 stall shower house. Just gone. It just went down the fucking river. The office is still standing. It has an apartment, on, a studio apartment on top. But the whole, if you've seen my TikTok videos, the whole inside's gutted. Um, the bathrooms were destroyed. There's nothing left inside. The only thing that we saved is stuff that I put on top of the cabinets, like a computer and a printer, a new printer we had just bought and stuff like that. That's still there. But just everything that is eye level or below is gone. Um, the There's another cabin that was by the pond called the Lily Pad. Uh, it's gutted. The water, the water come through so quick that it still has a roof standing, but it, it looks like it was a, a carport. It doesn't even look like it's a house. The walls are gone. Everything's gone to the roof standing. The boathouse is gone. Uh, there was another small cabin. We had cabin cozy, the cozy cabins, cozy one, cozy two, both gone. Uh, cozy two is still sitting there, but it's off its foundation about 50 feet to the right, uh, in the direction of the flow of the river. Um, there are people still standing there, including one guy who's got muscular dystrophy. There's no way he could hike out. So I've been, me and Mariah's been hiking in every day. So today I got their water back on because they had a bunch of water leaks. And I capped it all off, and they got water from a well through the generator. Um, so they got water. They have some food supplies. Their biggest need is gas. Plus, I needed to assess. I don't know what my living situation is right now. I don't know if the camp, even if the camper is stable and we can live in it and let's say the electrical system is good i don't i don't know if that's even going to be a campground anymore it's all everything's destroyed um plus the owner is 70 years old i don't know if she wants to rebuild a campground from scratch um so we me and has been hiking back in every day when we go in there we have to conserve our phone batteries because there's no electricity uh, we can charge them in my vehicles if i set start them up and idle them and then there's basically no internet i can send and receive texts no phone calls no TikTok posts, no, nothing like that. No, I can't even get on Facebook or Google. So, well, I took a bunch of pictures today hiking in. Um, my phone was dead by the time I hacked out. We fixed as many leaks as we could to get people on. So they're turning the generator to save fuel. They're turning it on for three hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon, and they're bottling as much water as they can. But it's well water, so it's not contaminated. In my town, the utilities, Irwin Utilities. They just now restored at, like, I think, 80% power. Most of the power was down. And they still have a bull water advisory. It had to bull the water for at least 30 minutes because their water stations got contaminated from the flood. Um, the industrial park lost all, all that, and a bunch of people died there. Uh, well, a bunch of people are missing there. They're not declaring anyone dead. Um, they set up the local high school for donations, like clothes, blankets, shoes. I think they even set up some temporary showers. There's a curfew in place. 33 people still missing that are confirmed missing. There's other people trying to get a hold of other people. Um, it's just really bad, and, and no one could have anticipated this. So you guys don't know this, even if you watch my show. But on Thursday, the news came to the campground, and they interviewed me. Uh, they cut my interview down to just one line. They asked me some questions about, like, what are you doing to prepare for the floods? And I told them, the, you know, the normal shit. But we had no idea it was going to be anything like this. Like, um, the person who owns it now, that owns the campground, her brother owned it since uh, 78. 
and the year he bought it was a big catastrophic flood. And they're saying that this could have been twice as high water levels as that catastrophic flood. It destroyed our hospital. So we, we had to fight tooth and nail to get a new hospital. Our old hospital was basically falling apart. When you went in there, there was buckets on the floor and shit from like water leaks to the ceiling and nothing worked. Nobody wanted to work there. So Ballad Health, who owns all the hospitals around here like a monopoly, wanted to close the hospital. But there's like some requirements where they have to be able to service so many people within like such an area. It's like state law. So we convinced them to build a mini hospital and they built it in the worst fucking possible place you could, right beside the river. But it's like a mini hospital. It was basically just an emergency room and a few doctors worked out of there. But that was it. And anything major, they sent you to their main hospital 30 minutes away. Um, and we fought tooth and nail to get that hospital built. They didn't want to do it, but they were required by law. And I don't think they'll rebuild now because it's not like they're shutting one down to to move right to a major place. It's more like, it got destroyed by an act of God, and we didn't have any say in that. We can't afford to rebuild it or whatever. So I don't even know if we'll get a hospital back. They, the, our biggest uh, event we have in this little town is called the Apple Festival. It was this weekend. It's all canceled. Um, yes, yeah, I don't know. It's just pretty bad. Other campgrounds destroyed. There were 59 people that had to be rescued by a Black Hawk helicopter off the roof of the hospital. They couldn't even get out of there quick enough. A um, bunch of people in the industrial park got rescued. Uh, there was just no, we're upstream, so there was no getting to us to rescue us. We hiked out. Um, we've been hiking back in. The hike is getting easier now. Now we can take the railroad tracks and the road at a certain point. Um, so the hike in isn't nearly as bad, but we got to bring, like tomorrow I'm bringing 25 gallons of gasoline in somehow. Um, it's just, everything's destroyed. I don't know. Um, the, the only thing I'm worried about on my camper is I don't know if the, the roof is kind of tweaked, so I don't know if that's going to leak or whatever. I have no idea, but I'm worried about the electrical system because all of the fuse, pan everything was, all that was underwater for a while, uh, a couple hours. Um, there was no power to it at the time, but I don't know if water gets in there and stays and I got to plug it up. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't have power to it now. I guess it's drying out. But my town just basically, Irwin, Tennessee got fucking, I know there's a lot of towns, but if you look up Irwin, Tennessee, it got ransacked. Like, I don't know what to say. It's bad. Sorry, I'm vaping off screen. Um, but me and Mariah, the reason I haven't been live, if you normally watch my live stream and show or whatever, the reason I haven't been live is because my office is fine where I do the show from. Um, but I've just been exhausted. We've been hiking in, working all day and hiking out. We had to hike out with the kids yesterday, which was a tragedy in itself. Um, the boys are at their grandparents, and I'm staying with my sister. The boys are at Mariah's mom's, and I'm staying with my sister with Mariah. And we got to go back tomorrow and take 25 gallons of gasoline back in. So, and that's just to run the generator so they have water. The generator's not big enough to power the campground. Plus, I don't think there's electrical lines down everywhere and shit ripped out of the ground. I don't think we could, even if we had a way to tie it into the grid, I don't think we could power it. Um, it might be, I, I hate to estimate, but there's just no road and no place to put a road. Like it's just the, where the road was is gone and it's probably 10 foot deeper than the road used to be. And it's sand. Like there's, I don't know when they'll ever have a road to access this place again. Um, when the highway department can get in there or whatever. Right now, it seems like all they're doing is putting barricades up so people don't tr attempt to go down there and get stuck or whatever. But there's just, there's no road. There's not even a place to put a road. They'd have to bring in, like, underlayment or whatever and doze it flat and then put, I don't know. But the campground is not only where I live, it's my job. So I don't really have a source of income right now. And a whole lot of other fucking expenses. So that's what we're working through right now. Um, and see what's going on. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. There's not, it doesn't seem like, there's no money coming into the campground to support a payroll. So I'm just trying to volunteer and help those people for 
for whatever, but I'm not getting paid for it. That's my job and where we live and Mariah's job uh, besides streaming. So um, we'll stay after it. But do you guys have any questions about it? Like it, it happened on, what is today? Is today Saturday? Friday night was the worst night, I guess. Um, and it went up over the course of all day. I think we finally left at 4 p.m., I, I, I couldn't sleep because I was so worried about the storm and the water and the rain. So you guys know me. I usually do a YouTube show until like 2 or 3 in the morning. And I don't wake up till 10 and I come into work about noon to do maintenance and shit and work however long I have to. I was so nervous knowing something was wrong. I woke up at 7 a.m., couldn't sleep, and started checking on the fucking river. Um... So Walmart's still here. The problem yesterday was everything was closed because nothing had power. They couldn't process sales. Walmart's still here. I even went to the dollar store today to buy some. Or I wanted some washcloths. We forgot washcloths. Um, they, there's a total amount of loss that has to be incurred to declare a state of emergency. Am I able to access my post post office? Yeah, the post office is still standing. I don't go there super often, but it's like in town away from all the river. Post office still standing. The office is good. Uh, we've been actually been, before my sister got, my sister just got power on today. So all day yesterday we were taking uh, power banks and our phones and shit there and charging it. The office has had power through the whole thing. And we could have, I guess, weathered it out there, but it's, there's just no way to sleep and no shower. So um, the office is still good. My computer, everything's still there. It's just um, I haven't had a chance to go by there, uh, but yeah, everything at the office is good. We I guess I guess they declared a state of emergency. I told my boss to be on the lookout for funds, like for rebuilding and and shit like that. I know I know the fact that they declared a state of emergency, and if the federal government does the same thing, that'll unlock a bunch of funds to like help people and do stuff. Um, so we'll see. The looting that's happening, I don't know. So here's what's bad about my town. Everybody's always in everybody else's business. So what the looting that's happening is in an area that you can't get into or leave. So what might be happening is some people evacuated and other people are trying to fucking live or maybe even called their neighbor and said, hey, can we get in your barn, blah, blah, blah. And people, nosy ass people down the road are calling shit. Federal state emergency was declared today. Thank you. So I know that opens up funds and things. One good thing about the community is like... Um, they they trying to come together. So, like, today, the high school that's taking donations announced, like, hey, we got too much shit. We need people to come get it. So, um, there's that. I think they still need stuff like wet wipes, charger bricks, and cords, um, different things like that. But, like, clothes and blankets and stuff, they had too much shit. So, that's good. Um, somebody was asking me about the different plants. Um, down at the industrial park, I, I met a truck driver on TikTok today that delivers there sometimes. There's like a, a Blue Lynx, there's a Foam Products, there's the Shed Company. There's a bunch, all that's, all of it's destroyed. Um, some of the buildings are still standing, but all of it's destroyed and it, and they were working that day. Uh, people are missing from the fucking plants and shit. School is actually out on a fall break right now, but there's no way, there's no way they could go there. Um, we camped there all the time. I was there when the trees went down. Oh, yeah, when the big tree went down and crushed the cars. So it's a lot different now. <laughs> In fact, like it was, so the river was so strong, it was creating these massive swirls. We measured one against a tree that was adjacent to it at over a 40 foot, 40 foot swell in the river where no rapids are. At where, where we're at the river, you can walk all the way across it. There was a 40 foot swell in the river and uh where it came up over our bank it ate the roadbed out so like where the where the road used to be by the river is now eight feet like i can stand in the hole and not see out of the top of it it's it's incredible it's crazy how about those railroads so they're not running any trains actually when we were walking out me and I were walking out a capacitor or something blew up in the the switch box at the at the um at a railroad crossing, like it was fucking horrible. It uh, something exploded. I called and reported it to the CSX, but they're not running any trains. I don't think they trust the train trestle until it gets inspected again. 
Uh, one of those is our truck. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Flag pond area. I don't know how bad it is, but it's cut off. You're allowed to leave, but once you get out, you can't go back. And I think they're escorting people out. Um, but it's pretty bad. I've been, so I've been, TikTok takes the least amount of data. I'm sorry, Telegram takes the least amount of data for me to post, I guess. So I've been posting a bunch of pictures on my Telegram page, even though I hate Telegram. Uh, I've been posting a bunch of pictures on my Telegram because I can do it easier with uh, with the service that I have. If I try to post on Facebook or when we're when we're out and about, if I try to post on Facebook or Twitter, my Twitter account or on here, it just freezes mid post. Um, no, I, I don't think. So a lot of people have asked, like, well, we can buy you some groceries. <laughs> we don't we don't have anywhere to store. We don't have refrigeration and power and shit. Um, some people ask, like, can we get to the campground and help? Like, clear trees or what? It's, it's incredibly dangerous just to go in and out. Um, there's no road, so we're hiking in and out. Um, they brought some, yeah, they brought some, like, swift water rescue people in for a little bit. It's going to be loud for just a second. They brought some like swift water rescue people and stuff in and they've been they've been hiking in and, and doing stuff and cording off. I don't I mean people have been uh, donating and shit. And then if you if you don't want to donate to me, um, I know people have been, but there is a GoFundMe that I can share later for a nonprofit called Rise Irwin and they're they're a nonprofit and they're just donating all the money to the community members. Um, a lot of people, you know, think that donations and shit are scams, but at least they're a nonprofit and they're donated to everybody else. Um, they got to go find me up. I just, I just saw the link for it. I don't know if I can get it and share it, but, um, yeah, um, it's just, I don't know. Things aren't really that bad now. Like I've got a place to stay. We've got food. Some of the stores are open. Um, it's a lot worse. Um, there's, there's people that have it worse. And I'm hoping that our camper is safe. I don't know. And we got the kids to their grandparents, so that's not a big issue. It is the Nolichucky River, uh, N-O-L-I-C-H-U-C-K-Y. Nolichucky River, Irwin, Tennessee, E-R-W-I-N, Tennessee. I think um, uh, our lead detective just did a big press conference. And... Um, the boys are pretty upset, <laughs> pretty upset. Um, they were kind of freaking out about it. Actually, Mariah's mom said we made them hike, hike out on the trail, and I had to pick them up over some things and drag them through something. It was pretty rough, to be honest with you. Like, I could have made it easily, but with the boys and Mariah and shit, it was pretty rough. And then Mariah's mom came and picked them up to get them out of here. And she, she said she took them to Zaxby's, so they ate $78 worth of food. And then she took them to her house and put them in the shower, and as soon as they got out of the shower, Oliver was already passed out, and then Liam got in the shower and immediately passed out. Um, are the cabins still standing? Any Anything that was anywhere near the river is gone. Th that means there's two little one-bedroom cabins, one uh, two-bedroom that's like rented out year-round, and then two small ones that are not ready for occupancy. They, they need to be remodeled and shit. I mean, people are sleeping on the floor and shit, but they're not they're not ready for occup occupancy um but we i don't know i feel bad for the owner like she's doing this so the original owner was a guy named rick and it was his passion this campground he did wood turning he taught a wood turning class he was all about nature mountain rescue white water rescue like that was that was his passion his love he has a young son um his he died of cancer and his son's only like six. So the owner now is his sister that stepped in. Rick left everything to his son and his, the owner now is his sister that is just managing it to leave it to his son. So his wishes are carried out. Um, so they don't have to sell it or whatever. And she's got a, she's, she's older, right? She's wore out. She's already worked a full career in life. Um, 
And on top of that, she's got a husband with dementia. Like she just got a lot of stuff on her plate. So that's why I originally started helping at the campground. I felt like the guys that were helping her before were, were just, I don't know. They were just trying to get money out of her, <laughs> but uh, they would hide more than they would work. So that's why I started helping her out. But man, it is, I don't know. It's insane. Um, I've never seen any, I, everybody knows water is destructive, but the power of water, but you don't expect it to pick up 200 foot of road and just make it disappear and then put a ditch there. Like it's wild. There's even, there's even a bunch of caskets, right? Caskets that floated down the river, caskets that are stuck in the woods now. I don't even know where the fuck they come from. Um, if the road is is gone, in is gone, any ideas how to get your... So my vehicles are safe. They are parked in the highest point and filled with all our belongings that I could get out of the camper. I couldn't move the camper, um, but everything I could get out of there. Uh, but no, until there's a road, I can't get Mariah's car out. I can't get my car out. I can't get anything out. It's just stuck there until someone rebuilds an entire road. Um under the train trestle, uh, there's probably a 20 foot section of road that is now just a 20 foot drop off into the water. And the other side, like where you think, oh, you could probably drive beside where the, it's just a fucking wall for the train trestle. And the other side's the river. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, even if I could get under the train trestle, the entire road, the rest of the roadhouse destroyed. There's maybe a, a 10 foot of good road and the rest of it is destroyed. It picked up the asphalt in giant sheets and took it away. And then where the asphalt was gone and that part of the road was soft, it just ate all that out. It, like you walk in a crater all the way in and all the way out. It's insane. Um, we've been parking at a church at the on the railroad tracks maybe it's probably um uh it's probably like two miles from where we're at and then we hot we hike in on the railroad tracks until we get to that train trestle and then we slip down a wall on the other side and then walk up the road um so there you go it's in Irwin, tennessee i'm sure there are tons i don't want to there's other places like greenville tennessee i know elizabeth in tennessee there's other places that got hit by all this um, even North, that place in North Madison County, North Carolina was, they have no cell phone service and no roads out. Like there's other places to hit about this, but all I know is about where I'm at. Uh, and I was at the campground while it was all happening. It was, it was horrible. Uh, but all, at that, that point, the road was blocked. The Creek to get to the Appalachian trail was blocked. We just had to stand there and watch it and then go to the highest ground, right? We just kept backing up the hill and the water was following us. Um, just nobody thought it was going to be that bad. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad here. I don't, I've never seen, I never thought that an interstate, I-26, both sides, two different bridges, they're not even connected, both collapsed. Like, it's fucking crazy. I saw your, yeah, Michael Baker, um, was on CNN. My nephew got interviewed by CNN, uh, oh, a couple people. Uh, Michael Baker was on ABC too. Yes, I'm in North Carolina. Asheville. Yeah, Asheville's bad. Um, Asheville had uh, some some really bad areas and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm on just on the other side of the mountain through Sam's Gap. But I don't know. It's really bad. The railroad. When you look, so the railroad is across the river from our campground. When you look at the railroad, the railroad's still there but the water ate out everything underneath it. Like there's, I don't think, I don't know when they'll be able to run a train. I used to work at the railroad though. And they shut it down because they figured out that they shut it. They fired like 95% of the employees. So there's just a few trains that run on it. Um, that service like, uh, Hamlet, North Carolina and places over there. But I worked there for a couple years until they, they laid off everybody. It was actually a really good job. But I'm afraid that they won't rebuild the railroad either. And they'll just ship everything around us through Indiana, through Nashville, and then back around. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't, I'm just kind of rambling now. But um, there's a bunch of foes, uh, posts still on Facebook about missing people. Um, some people's moms, some people they haven't heard of and heard from in two days. I don't think they want to jump the gun and say anybody's dead, but... 
it's kind of hard to imagine being swept away in a flood and two days later you still haven't you know made contact with somebody and said hey i'm so and so can you get a hold of the police or something um it seems like it seems like it's a pretty bad fate for those so that there's a nuclear facility here it got flooded and some of their stuff got washed away but the i we know some people on the security team there that do security they watched the people flee one of the factories and the, from their security cameras they couldn't do anything but they saw it on security cameras they watched people flee a factory in the flood zone swim to wait wade to i guess it wasn't high enough to swim wade to a tractor and trailer flatbed and get on it hoping to be rescued because they couldn't get out and then the the flatbed turned over that was the 12 it was i think it was 12 or 13 people that immediately got got put in the water um and they found six of them and the other six or seven are still missing uh it was just bad i've never seen like a river where there's no rapids out have a 50 foot swell in it like it was like a constant wave 40 50 feet high it was, it was insane i don't i don't even know what to say um but it was pretty bad and bluetooth headphones are not supported uh oh anyways it was pretty bad um i'm just i don't even know like people are asking well, what can we do i don't i don't fucking know i know what i'm doing is i'm hiking in every day cutting trees and plumbing um i have no idea if i'll have a place to live or a place to work when it's all said and done but right now i'm staying at my sister's house um in a bedroom with one of my relatives and with mariah and that's that's what we're doing so uh i'll get back to the live streams when i can but right now i'm pretty killed from hiking in hiking out and doing everything i've lived in the smokies my whole yeah so they claim that there was a flood in 1918 that like rivaled this one but i don't who would who the fuck would know about uh a flood in 1918 but the biggest thing is i know i've got people that watch me all the time we're safe we're alive the kids are at their grandparents me and mariah are walking in every day and walking out and trying to do her thing um trying to help out and nobody has to worry about us i just can't go live right now um and then when i figure out if i have a place to live and a job and shit, i guess i guess i'll figure it out from there if you want you can look up flood r1 tennessee and see some of the footage i know somebody sent me a youtube video today that i sent to my sister that was uh pretty wild uh it was it was like the devastation from a drone footage and you could see the hospital and the industrial park it was it was bad um and we weren't i don't think we were ever like in danger of like being swept away from the water because we could always just back up the hill and eventually that hill turns into a mountain and then after it turns into a mountain it goes up the appalachian trail so i don't we weren't like oh we, we're gonna have to stand on this you know five square foot or, or on a roof or something we could always just keep going up the mountain but no one thought it was going to get that far um if you want to support like through the show links you can go to coldbeer.fund that's coldbeer.fund that's my show links there's a GoFundMe for Rise Irwin, R-I-S-E. It's an acronym for like a, a nonprofit here in Irwin. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to help. Uh, if you want to stay in touch, you can message me or send me something. Or I'm I, I'm Cold Beer Confessional just about everywhere. YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, that's the show I do every night. But that's where we're at right now. Everybody's safe. Um, I don't know if I have a place to live or a job, but <laughs> everybody's safe at least. Uh, and we've got a roof over our head when we're not walking in and walking out and working. Uh, the only thing we left behind was the cat because it, we couldn't, <laughs> if you tried to, it was freaking out. If you tried to carry it, it destroyed it. So we left it with some people that stayed in there and they're taking care of it, uh, feeding water and watching it. But we just couldn't get it out of it. We tried twice to carry it out and it, it just attacked us. So anyways uh you can check out some of the damage on my on my tiktok page the reason i went live here is because i've been getting a lot of views on tiktok i don't know gilligan came out with us i i carried him about halfway and he walked about halfway he's he's old man he's 
in human years, he's like 17 out with us. I, I carried him about halfway and he walked about halfway. He's, he's old, man. He's in human years. He's like 17. So I don't know how old that is for a dog, but he's old. So I carried him through the roughest part the same way I carried the kids. Um, I felt like I made the trip fucking four times carrying everybody and walking back and carrying somebody else. But it's a little bit easier going in and out. We're going back in and out tomorrow. Um, I try to do a TikTok live if I can, just because I've, I've noticed people are interested in these videos and asking me questions. Uh, and I, I don't have access to the office, so I can't go live everywhere like I usually do. So, uh, Other than that, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're safe. I'll be live whenever I can, and I'll keep posting pictures and stuff. I've been posting most of them on Telegram, but I'll try to post them on Twitter and uh, Facebook, too. I don't know if you can save a live and post it. I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. No. There you go. We'll keep trying, and you guys stay in touch. And if you know anybody in Northeast Tennessee, you might want to reach out to them. Southwest, or, uh, Northeast Tennessee, West Virginia. Uh, or West, Western North Carolina, Southwest Virginia. The, the area is fucked. So, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. I'm going to hop off here and go get a shower. I think Mariah just got out of the shower. We're literally covered. I was digging up pops all day. I'm covered in mud from head to toe. Digging with my hands before I could find a shovel. I had to dig out a shovel. <laughs> so, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. Um... Let, if you see anybody else on any of the platforms that's asking about me, just tell them that I'm okay. I can't, I can't post everywhere. So, see you guys. Let me get a shower and some rest. Have a good night. Shower and some rest. Have a good night.